Okay, welcome back. This is now the uh, this is now the fourth lecture in our series on introducing structural reliability. We've now gone through the statistical framework and looked at some of the uh, practical methods for reliability analysis. So now we're going to look at risk as the basis for target reliability values, and then look at reliability as the basis uh, for structural design standards. Okay, so firstly, let's remind ourselves of the typical failure probabilities um, and the corresponding uh, reliability indices that we encounter in um, structural design. Um, so, so later on you will see that uh, in structural design we typically, typically deal with reliability values um, of 3 upwards to around uh, just below 5. Um, which corresponds to probabilities of failure on the order of one in a thousand all the way up to around, let's say, one in a million or so, right? Now, nothing lasts forever. Everything breaks eventually, which is to say everything has a failure probability of one. Um, so it's not meaningful to refer to probability of failure without the context of time included, which is to say it is only meaningful to refer to reliability values when it is associated with some reference time period as well. So let's first look at how we can um, transform uh, reliability values between different time frames. So, uh, so we will generally encounter beta values that are given either in terms of an annual failure probability or in terms of a failure during the lifetime of the structure. Uh, now, the easiest way of transforming between the two is to think in terms of the probabilities of the structure not failing. So let's say we define an event, uh, AI, as the event that the structure does not fail in a given year, and we'll give that year the index I. So I will then go from uh, 1 all the way up to whatever the intended lifetime of the structure is. I'm going to call it N. Uh, very often this is like 50 years or 100 years. So if, the so if the structure does not fail during its lifetime, that means it does not fail during the first year of its lifetime and during the second and during the third all the way up to year N. Um, so the probability of it not failing in its lifetime is, the, is then the product of the individual probabilities of it not failing in any given year. So if we assume that the probability of not failing during a year is constant for every year, we can simply take the annual probability of not failing and raise that to the power of the number of years in the lifetime. Um, so in that sense, then, the probability of failure during n years is just a complement of the event of no failure occurring, which we denote with this overline. And that is 1 minus the probability of no failure occurring. So we can express the probability of failure during its lifetime in terms of the probability of not failing in a given year. And let, and let me remind you that this is equal to 1 minus the probability of failure during a given year. So then one way that we, one can transform between the reliability index that corresponds to the annual probability of failure uh, and the reliability index that co corresponds to the lifetime probability of failure is, uh, is through this equation. We can manipulate this a bit further to come up with a, uh, an equation that does not involve this, this power. Uh, by using uh, De Morgan's logic transformation rules, and specifically the complement of an intersection of a set of events is equal to the union of the individual complements of those events. Using this re relation, we can then rewrite the event of failure during the lifetime of the structure as the equivalent e event, which is the union of failure events during every given year which then it corresponds to a sum of reliabilities rather than a product. Uh, and, so, and so in the case where the probability of failure is equal for every year, uh, 
it is simply the number of years in the lifetime of the structure times the annual probability of failure. So in that way uh, we can write an alternative equation to translate between the annual beta value and the lifetime beta value um, in terms of a product with the, uh, with the number of years. Now notice that this term over here is the probability of failure. This term over here without the exponent there is the probability of not failing. So it's 1 minus Bf, both of these being annual probabilities.